Okay. Uh, we've been working on creating a number pad that will dial a phone number for us using a fake caller ID. If you've been following the tutorials, you know what I'm talking about. Um, before we continue with the GUI, uh, the graphic user interface with the number pad, we've got to, I've got to show you how to dial a phone number on the N900 using Python. I've shown you how to do it from the command line using a, a, you know, a shell script. Um, today we're going to look at just, uh, really it's three lines of code pretty much, although one's kind of long, so we'll probably break that into three lines of code itself. Um, but we're just going to dial a phone number using Python on our N900. This terminal we're looking at right here, as you can see, is my N900. I'm SSH'd into it. And so we're just going to do everything right on the phone here. Uh, I'm going to run Vim because luckily the N900 can run pretty much any open source program that I can run on my Linux desktop. So uh, Vim, and we'll just create a script called mycall.py. And of course, we're going to start off, it's a Python script, so we're going to start off with what we start all our Python scripts off with, right, people? Because a lot of people don't do this, and it pisses me off. We're, we're going to start off with our, um, our shebang line, which is pound, exclamation mark, forward slash, usr, forward slash, bin, forward slash, in env for environment, and our environment's going to be Python. This is important. It's not necessary, but it just makes things a whole lot easier and shows that you actually know what you're doing. Um, because it just it tells basically our operating system if you're running a Unix based operating system so pretty much anything other than Windows that's the line that tells you what type of code it is because Unix based operating systems don't care that we ended the file in a .py um, in my opinion running uh, ex uh, executable programs based on the file extension is uh, not very secure um, at least not in the way that Windows handles it. Anyway, you don't have to write that, but why wouldn't you? It just makes your script easier to use and makes you look like you actually know what you're doing. Anyway, we're going to import one module, and that's the dbus module. And this is the module that basically will allow us to do a bunch of phone functionality on the N900. So next we'll create an object. We'll just call it bus. The bus is a basically a name that we are creating. We can make it within reason anything we want it to be. Next, we're going to say that we're going to use the dbus module that we've already imported, and we're going to say system bus. It is case sensitive, so capital S and capital B in that, and then don't forget your parentheses there. So we create a bus object. It's a dbus sysbus object. Next, we're going to say, we're going to create another object. We're going to say call, and that's the name of our object, and we're going to use dbus once again, and we are going to type dbus interface. And now this is the line that's actually going to be, it's all one line, but so long we'll break it down into three lines of code just to make it a little bit easier to read so things don't go off the end of the screen. So first part is we're going to say bus, which is the object we just created up here. And we're going to say get underscore object. And then inside another set of parentheses, we're going to say single quote com dot Nokia dot CSD, close your quotes, so that's our, um, our uh, string right there, and then we're going to give it another string, um, but to keep things easier to read, we're going to bring it down to the next line here, and indent it, doesn't matter how much you indent it, as long as you indent it the same on each line, so in here we're going to add another string, so, so single quote, forward slash com, forward slash Nokia, forward slash CSD, forward slash call. Comma, and then still the same line of command, but we're going to bring it down to a new line. And once again, we're going to indent the same amount. And we're going to say single quote, com, Nokia, CSD, and call with a capital C this time, single quote close the outer parentheses. 
So these three lines are basically all one command. And I'm not going to really try to explain it because I don't fully understand all of it. I just know that's what we need to do to create a call object. Next, we're just going to create a call. So we're going to say, and this is our last line of the code, our call object that we just created. And we're going to create with capital C, capital W, and then inside parentheses, we're going to give it a string in this case of the phone number we want to dial. We'll say 1-800-466-4411, which is the old um, Google 411, the Google 411 number, which is out of service now, but will give us a message and it's just a good test number to use. We're going to say dbus dot U, capital U, capital I, N, T, 32, and then inside another set of parentheses, a zero, and that's it. So this is our actual command using what we created up here to dial this phone number. So real quick, let me get my camera ready here. We'll save this code. We'll make it executable, change mod plus X. And once again, remember everything I'm doing in this terminal screen is actually on the phone because I'm SSH'd into it. And now I'm gonna say dot slash and the name of our script. So let me check my camera here and we should see the phone. So here's the N900 and I will hit enter on my computer screen here and ooh, we typed something wrong. Uh, interface, not interface. So real quick, go in, add that R that I missed. Now, once again, I will run the script and make sure our screen is still on here. And it's dialing the number. I'll stop it because the screen started to fade away. I want to show you that it's actually happening when I run this command. Once again, I can type this into the terminal or create a shortcut for it on the phone. I'll hit enter there and the phone is dialing. I'll throw it on speakerphone. So that's it. Uh, I will have this sample code we just created in the first link in the description. So go ahead, head over there and download it if you need to. Or as I recommend, um, just actually, you know, type it out following the tutorial. That way you actually learn what's going on. Uh, but for you lazier people and just want to copy and paste, that's fine. I copy and paste code sometimes myself. But we're going to be using almost this identical code in our NumberPad application towards the end, probably be the last thing we do in that application, um, to after we grab information from fake caller ID or caller ID faker.com, we'll grab the number we need to dial and dial it. So thank you once again for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.